केंद्र सरकार में मेरे साथी माय कोलीग इन द यूनियन गवर्नमेंट मिनिस्टर फॉर लेबर एंड एम्प्लॉयमेंट श्री बंडारू दत्तात्रेय गारू दी सर्वेयर जनरल ऑफ इंडिया डॉक्टर सुब्बाराव गारू श्री वैवीएन कृष्णमूर्ति डायरेक्टर नेशनल रिमोट सेंसिंग सेंटर बर्बरा रयान सेक्रेटरी डायरेक्टर ग्रुप ऑन एर्थ ऑब्जर्वेशन जीओ स्टीवन यू बर्ग्रैन चीफ एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑफिसर ऑफ ट्रिम्बरे श्री के के सिंह चेयरमैन रोटा ग्रुप एंड देन द डेलीगेट डिस्टिंग डेलीगेट्स from across the globe and also in many parts of india we have all assembled here friends i feel very happy to be at miss you today in this international conference at this historic hyderabad city which is heart of india this uh, geospatial is an enabling technology this can be used for betterment of the human civilization because we are living in a new age new aspirations new innovations new new inventions and then we are all moving towards smartness smart future so this smart future at the geospatial world form a premier global geospatial conference which is covering all aspects of uh, geospatial technologies very important and very relevant i'm told that the theme of this year's world form is geospatial plus deep learning shaping smarter world musing over this theme i got this deep sense of striking realization that human civilization has indeed progressed tremendously the catch phrases today in the field of technology are artificial intelligence geospatial technologies machine learning cloud computing interest of things big data and deep learning so divergent from the digital vocabulary of the past after sri narendra modi ji has become the prime minister of the country he changed the political discourse development speedy governance they are the buzz words and he gave us a three line mantra one he said reform perform and transform later i added sir reform perform transform and inform now i am the information broadcasting minister i will do that also <laughs> he has also added new dimensions he gave a call for uh, missy dc program missy dc is the name given by me the program is given by the honorable prime minister missy dc means mi make in india si skill india di digital india ci clean india that is missy dc the stress is to encourage more and more investments more and more opportunities to the local people and more and more knowledge acquisition we are living in a global village we can't live in isolation we must get benefit of living together in this global village this geospatial this technologies is very much useful for advancement of our technology for advancement of our livelihood opportunities friends this we are moving towards a digital world and this is the enabling technology basic enabling technology because the world is moving towards digitalization and in that every moment is a real time time is very precious now things are happening very fast and that's why the prime minister also want to transform the country reform the country and reform can be done by performing 
without performing just mere words will not suffice to transform a country of India's uh, size. So keeping that in mind, the Prime Minister motivated all of us. So good governance is another motive. One is development, second is good governance. Good governance, one of the important component is good governance with the geospatial. Geospatial will help to promote good governance. High-end technology made and provide to citizens, the users, to use them in a very simple manner. That will be very useful. That is the biggest contribution of the geospatial technologies. Your innovations spell a great opportunity for the governments of the day to incorporate all the latest technologies to ensure effective delivery of schemes and programs. Our government have always been cognizant of the way technology can be leveraged to day-to-day -day governance. The initiatives of Digital India, demonetization, promoting digital payments, Janadhana, Aadhaar, Mobile Trinity, Smart Cities, all bear testimony to the intent of this government. The Prime Minister is now is keen on implementing a scheme called a JAM, J, Janadhana Yojana, opening a bank account. 25.26.72 crore new bank accounts are opened in a matter of one year, four months in record. 26.72 crore bank accounts. Second is A, Aadhaar for identity, enabling with Aadhaar, seeding with Aadhaar. Third is mobile. Without man to man contact or woman to one woman contact or woman to man contact, shaking hands and then doing something in between. There is no need to for all this. If once you implement the job, the money can be transferred directly from the government to the people, either scholarship, either the payment, whether the compensation, whether the subsidy or any grant can reach people directly. In government sector, in also in private sector, there is no scope for delay, there is no scope for corruption, there is no scope for leakage also. The package can reach the people without leakage. That is the advantage of this technology. So friends, uh, we are weeding out black money and corruption by digitizing the financial space through increased financial inclusion and a massive push to digital trans transactions. Survey of India, I was just uh, telling Subaragar, recently we had another survey, survey of the notes, where they are lying. Are they lying uh, properly or are they are lying under the beds, bedrooms or bathrooms? And finally, every note have been surveyed and found their way to the banks. That is the biggest achievement of the survey undertaken by the Prime Minister. What do you call demonetization or remonetization? Now every note has an address. Every note has an address. It's like a geotagging. Every note has a care of address. Whether it belongs to Subarao, Ramarao, Engatrao, Naidu, or Reddy, or Chaudhary, or this man or that man. That is the greatest advantage. Similarly, the geospatial technology will also be useful to locate, to identify, to understand, to penetrate and enhance your knowledge and then make available better services to the people. Friends, today the day won't be far when all you would need is your thumbprint to transact business. Some people started making an arg argument saying that everybody did not have phone in this country. For their information, I would like to tell you, there are 107 crore telephones in the country, 107 crore cell phones in the country, 107 crore. Population is 130 crore. If you leave the children, small kids, that means everybody is having a cell phone. So forget cell phone for now the new technology provides that you would, what you need is not a cell phone, what you need is your thumb. I hope that everybody is having a thumb. Even a dumb will have a thumb. We all know that. So this thumb impression, this is totally possible with the other enabled payment systems which has already captured the biometric details of more than 100 crore people. Coming to urban development, my own ministry, technological advances have completely redefined the urban area of governance paradigm and have acted as an enabler in addressing economic and socio-economic issues in urban development. A massive urbanization is going on and you can't reverse it also. Even if, 
even if you don't like it also you cannot reverse it because education employment entertainment economic activity enhanced medical facilities they are all available in urban areas so people are moving towards urban areas even i moved from rural development to urban development earlier i was rural development minister now i am urban development minister under sri adar bihari vajpayee i was a rural development minister now i am urban development minister under sri narendra modi government it's a natural process so you how to make urban life more comfortable how to make cities livable what are the conditions prevalent as are now what can be done what are the best practices across the globe how do you move forward that is the agenda of this government urbanization is one of the most important realities in the recent decades in india nearly 606 million people are poised to live in urban centers by 2030 in india 606 million people are poised to live in urban centers by 2030 in india india's urban population comprises 11% of the world urban population and this figure is expected to increase to 13% by 2020 an estimated 180 million rural people live next to india's 70 largest urban centers a number that will increase to about 210 million by 2030 as the world continues to move it towards urbanization the need for effective urban planning has increased more than ever a smart city approach is the solution that promotes innovation and competitiveness of cities as well as citizen engagement cities in the past were built on river banks they are now built along highways but in the future they will be built based on the availability of optical fiber networks and next generation infrastructure mark my words that is going to happen our government's vision is to build 100 smart cities across the country 100 smart cities will act as uh, lighthouses so that others also get inspiration from these these cities a geo special science and technology gs and t is the means to realize my vision the vision of this government geo special technology gst makes use of satellite navigation systems and computer database called the geographical information system gis to create capture store and retrieve geographic and spatial information of any place this is very vital this system has already been has the capability to extract and pull relevant information establishing a clear understanding of patterns relations graphical visualization of graphic geographical sectors at the click of a button at a click of a button you know what is your city how is your city what is available where this system has the capability to extract and pull relevant information establishing a clear understanding of patterns and relationship gst and remote sensing tools find its use in urban planning as an analytical and modeling tool it can be applied to a wide area of problems it is particularly useful for cities and towns that require working around the existing infrastructure the simplest application of the geospatial spatial technology is the use of geotagging and geographical information to any media such as the location coordinates etc in the form of a metadata it can help users to find a variety of location specific information from a device some other applications of the gst encompass conducting a feasibility study of a location or a housing structure example ascertaining the suitability of a location for the construction of a bridge or a dam environmental planning gauging the environmental suitability of a land assessing the feasibility of an area for waste disposal and treatment among others today geospatial industry finds its value and utility in almost every socio economic activity embedding location and precision into various perspectives over these years it has transformed itself from a mere mapping tool to an industrial process of offering a value in terms of enhancing productivity efficiency cost effectiveness transparency safety and project management it has got immense value and it has got immense potential the basic premises of using gst is that visual dimension is added which helps bring us closer to the realities that characterize the real world planning and policy problems 
GST enables efficient, effective, relevant and integrated planning through the use of real-time data and data analytics. Friends, our government have brought, the, brought in place several path-breaking schemes to completely transform India. In the urban development sector, initiatives like Smart City Program, Hriday Program, Swachha Bharat Abhiyan, Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana, Amrut, Atal Mission for Regeneration and Urban Transformation for 500 Cities. They are all the programs of my ministry. We want to change the urban landscape. And I am happy to share with you, in India, a new urban renaissance is taking place. Competitiveness has come into every city. Every city wants to become a smart city. Every city wants to improve the living standards of the people. And then they are also going for credit rating of every city. These are the new developments, new initiatives that are taking place. A common thread running between all these schemes is the extensive use of ICT technologies, geospatial information systems, thereby effectively leveraging on the latest technology, providing more efficient output. Let me give you a glimpse of the use of GST in each of the schemes. Under housing, beneficiary red component, you can track whether the house is there or not. Is it on paper or is it on land? Geo-tagged photographs, that is a new idea. Second is, we have also, to achieve this objective, ministry by ministry has entered into a MOU with the National Remote Sensing Centre, NRSC Hyderabad. The management information system developed under Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana has been integrated with the Bhuvan server of NRSC for geo-tagging. This is proving to be very useful. Secondly, currently more than 70,000 geo-tagged photographs can be located on a phone map. Second, Swachha Bharat Abhiyan. Swachha Bharat Toilet Locator. Toilet Locator is a mobile application launched by the Ministry of Urban Development to easily locate, use and rate toilets. The application supports public ratings based on the hygiene, infrastructure, safety, thus allowing users to know more clearly about the condition of toilet. Geo-tagging, I am suggesting to municipal bodies also, geo-tagging of the employees. Whether the cleaning person is available on the street, whether he is doing his duty or not, you can locate him. You can locate him. That is another. Otherwise, you know, many places people complain, they are there on the roads, they are there on the roads, but they are not there on the roads. So that can be avoided by this. So the Swachha Bharat Toilet Locator truly encourages to be more actively involved in realizing the dream of Swachha Bharat. Friends, the app is entirely based on the use of GPS-based geospatial technologies. I would also like to share a case study where the application of GST in Swachha Bharat Abhiyan has been attempted by Indian Institute of Remote Sensing, a unit of ISRO in Dehradun. India's GPS-aided geo-augmented navigation, Gagan, was used to preciously locate the authorized and unauthorized garbage dumping sites covering five main routes in Dehradun city. The road network connected to the dumping sites was also mapped for route planning. Geo-tagging of all the participating government institutes was also done through this. GIS technologies such as geofencing, buffering, geospatial analysis, spatial and attribute queries, etc. were extensively used to develop an optimum implementation plan. It is remarkable to note that 22 garbage dumping sites and road sites were cleaned within a span of three hours. Around 45 million ton, uh, approximately 10 ton of garbage was collected and disposed during this entire exercise. This is an initiative that can be scaled up to cover the rest of the country. I would like all the cities in the country to follow this, to understand this, learn from their experience and then try to implement it in your own area. With regard to Amrut, government have launched a program called Amrut for 500 cities. Formulation of a GIS based master development plan for all the 500 cities is one of the important reforms under Amrut which has been approved as a 100% centrally funded scheme with a budget outlay of 515 crore. The major objective of the sub-schemes are to develop common digital geo-reference-based -refer maps and land-use maps using geographical information systems. Formulate a master plan for 500 cities that are selected as Amru cities. 
and you have a huge amount of allocation under Amru cities for each and every city for drinking water, for sanitation, for solid waste management, for transport money is being made available to all these 500 cities. Total time period for base map generation including data acquisition, geo referring, geo referencing, GPS survey, data processing, ground truthing, ground truthing, generation of thematic layers, etc. as per the design and standards for 500 cities would be to 24 to 36 months they will be available. That will really help us. Time period for urban data collection, data analysis and master plan formulation up to a draft proposal stage to be in 24 months. GST forms the bedrock of effective implementation of the Amrut mission. Friends, the ease of approvals of construction permits. My government, my ministry has held consultation with around nine ministers, seven ministers. Seven times we met civil aviation, defense minister, railway minister, and also consumer affairs minister, environment minister, myself. We sat together because every applicant has to go here, there, 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 and then around. You have to make around some trips and it will take months and years. So now we are coming out with ease of approvals, ease of doing business. Part of ease of approvals is part of ease of doing business. So I said by Honorable Prime Minister, you need not go to the airport of the of India to get a permission to construct a house in Hyderabad. It will be available. There will be color-coded maps. You can go through that and then you can file a affidavit and then automatically it's approved. And up to a particular level, even in cities, this uh, environmental ministry clearance also is not required. There are standards set, then you can go through that also. All this is enabled to provide ease of approvals and ease of doing business. Friends, uh, the unified building bylaws were already modified in Delhi. They are modified for Mumbai city. And finally, we want the entire country to follow the same residential plot size of 105 square meters. Saral scheme has been launched wherein the plot owner need not obtain sanctioning of building plans at all. He has to just submit an undertaking intimating about the construction along with the requisite fees and other documents to start construction. The number of documents to be submitted for obtaining building permits have been reduced from 40 to just 14. The maximum time limit for granting building permits also, I propose to bring it down to 30 days. Within 30 days, online, you apply and if it's permitted, okay, or otherwise deemed to have been permitted. That is the road map for us in the coming days. Color-coded zonal maps, as I told you, to be developed for defense airports, usually for civilian purpose as well. Construction permit approvals have been hazened by the extensive use of geotagging technology. This is where I am connecting with that. Hurda emission also. With regard to Hurda emission, to achieve, to get, to get permit to again for building, you should know where is the archaeological survey of India, where is that ancient structure is there, going to them again and uh, seeking permission and all, that is no more required. You can know through Gagan, through Bhuvan, where it lies and what is the distance and how much uh, di distance you are located. And all this is going to help us to get uh, early permissions and so that the developmental activity of the country can keep up, pick up further. I am told the geospatial sector, which is an enabling technology in the future, it has got a bright future and uh, Sri Subbara was telling me that uh, there is an opportunity for 500 billion investment in this sector, 500 billion in five years. That will create thousands of jobs, thousands of opportunities. Friends, uh, India is the most favorable destination for investment, thanks to the leadership of Narendra Modi. Modi means 3D. Decisive, dynamic, development, three-in-one Modi. And also there is a movement of Modi going on in the country. Movement of Modi, not Narendra Modi, Modi, M-O-D-I, making of developed India, M-O-D-I, that movement is going on. I urge upon all people, join the movement. Join the movement. Strengthen the movement to make a strong and stable nation. Invest world economy is little slow down. China also is little going slow. India is the one bright spot where investments are coming. Highest foreign exchange, lowest inflation. Highest foreign exchange, lowest inflation. This is not what Venkai and I do, Minister Narendra Modi government saying. This is what World Economic Forum is saying. This is what World Bank is saying. This is what ADB is saying. This is what Moody ratings, not Modi ratings, Moody ratings also is saying. 
India is the favorite destination for investment. So this is a great opportunity here. The conference here, this three-day conference, I'm sure this will be very much useful for further advancement of the technology, know from each other's experiences, know the success stories across the group, new innovations, new technologies, and then enabling the communities across the globe further to develop and move faster. That is the purpose of this conference. I'm very happy that this conference is taking place in this historic, beautiful, beautiful city of Hyderabad. The organizers uh, have made all the arrangements. I hope you will all have comfortable stay here. And these, uh, all these uh, partners in this conference, I would like to compliment each one of them for participating in this conference and trying to make this a grand success. The deliberations at the end of the day, I hope they will be more constructive. What is required is constructive. We must forget the path of earlier path. Obstruction is no more is the solution. Construction is the solution. We have to move forward. We should definitely remember the past, but we must think about the future. We must plan for the future. We must work together. And as, as a world community, we must all work in unison for the betterment of the civilization. This uh, re recent information that has come, it's very disturbing that the wealth is considered in the, in the hands of few people. Even take my own country, the report says, I'm examining it, I'm studying it. I'm studying it, not exam, I'm studying it. 58% of the wealth in the hands of 1% of the population. It is totally not good. So we have to see that the economic disparities are ended. Everybody should get a feeling that is also part of the government, is part of the system, is part of the development. The fruits of development should reach all sections. This is one institution, the geospatial planning will really help us to achieve that. In a simple example, I was Minister for Rural Development. I remember the record of rights for the farming community to know about the details of his own land, about his own land. Many people, they know where is their land, but they don't know the boundaries of their land, the survey numbers of their land. The survey number is known only to the village assistant or the Karanam or the Munsif village officer, you say. Nobody knows. Even a chief minister will not be able to know. Even I do not know what are my survey numbers and all. So survey is very important that way. And it's very complicated those days. Now, of course, it's becoming very simple and very transparent and all. To make it transfer, transparent, the land records of the people, that should be made easily available to the people on payment of a nominal fees instead of going around the Thaluk office, revenue office, doing rounds and then doing other things also. That should not be the case. They should get it on application online. Once you go and then put your thumb, you must be able to get your certificate of your land and the certificate must be made bankable. Bank should accept that certificate and give the loan also. That is the aim of the government. The Prime Minister is very keen. He has already started uh, even a soil health card. What is the health? What is the health of your soil? What is the wealth under the soil? You are also not only on land, you are also going underneath the land. So that is going to help us what is available there under the road, the pipes, the systems, the how many times they are digging the roads and then complicating the issues. Why can't they go for a duck system where all these wires and these things can be in one place? Where is the hard rock? Where is the soft rock? What is the nature of the soil? All these things can be made available to the people. That is the way forward. The Prime Minister is very keen to empower the people. Information with confirmation. Information with confirmation is a great ammunition. Mark my words, information with confirmation. Simple information alone without confirmation. Sometimes our media friends, they come to me and they ask me, sir, there are reports like this, what do you say? I say, your report has no support. Leave it, come next, we'll go to the next question. The report must have the support of a document, of a research, of a study. Similarly, this information must have the confirmation backed by all the facts, then it will act as an ammunition to end poverty, to end illiteracy, to end corruption, to end economic disparities. So you people here, we have all assembled here from across the globe, you have a great responsibility. Please work on that. 
and provide further information so that people can live in a more meaningful and comfortable way across the globe and also in India. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Jai Hind.